e-commerce marketing podcast listener. Are you looking to increase traffic and sales to your website? You can do this by launching your own referral program. Just visit getosi.com and sign up for a free trial today. That's getosi.com. Now get ready to hear from your e-commerce marketing expert of the week as they drill down to give you details on marketing strategies that can help grow your business. Welcome back to the e-commerce marketing podcast, everyone. I am your host, Arlen Robinson. And today we have a very special guest. I meet Irene Moore, who is a digital communications expert who helps e-commerce brands build communities and drive sales online. She co-founded Digital Marketing London, a specialist online marketing consultancy to the beauty, wellness, and luxury sector five years ago, and quickly grew the agency through delivering digital marketing campaigns for global brands such as L'Oreal, NYX Cosmetics, Cantu Beauty, and Dior. Welcome to the podcast, Irene. Thank you for having me. I'm super excited to be here. Yeah, no, it's, it's a pleasure having you, and thank you for joining us today. I, I'm, I'm really excited to talk to you today about our topic, which is going to be influencer marketing, because it, it's something that is near and dear to my heart. Uh, as all, our, all of our listeners know, me being the co-founder of OSI Affiliate Software, um, these days, I, I like to think of influencers really as the affiliates of today. I don't know, you know who originally coined the term, but... Um, th- that's kind of really what they are. They're they're the affiliates of today, um, promoting brands, you know, in in exchange for uh, an incentive. Um, so super excited to to dive deep into that because I know you can definitely uh, provide a lot of value as to that subject. But before we do get into all of that, why don't you tell us a little bit more about your background and you know specifically how you got into what you're doing today? Sure. Um, Well, first of all, I completely agree totally in terms of influencers being the affiliate marketers of today. And I'm I'm, I'm excited to talk about this. And typically when brands come to me or come to my agency, they are in a place where they want more awareness, you know, typically with a slightly younger audience or a different niche than they are able to currently penetrate or they want more sales and typically they want both right Right. and you know we're a marketing agency so of course you're gonna you're gonna get that you're gonna get the sales and everything else but actually what we're helping them do is build communities around their brand and not just numbers for numbers sake but actually engaged communities that convert into clients and customers and then in turn convert into raving fans so it's very aligned with the work that you do you know the power of this already Um, and the way I got into this was actually by happy accident (laughs) because when I was first in my corporate job before I started my agency I was working for some incredible brands. I've always worked, been very lucky to work for, you know, really incredible brands. And I remember when I was working, um, handling PR actually for um, Bobby Brown Cosmetics. Mm-hmm. And I noticed this really strange trend. And it wasn't, they weren't called influencers or bloggers or anything at that point. It was just cool girls doing like cool stuff with makeup online. That was literally what they were. They were. Mm-hmm, and right. um, I just noticed that actually this is where all the makeup artists, this is where all our creators were looking for inspo. And, you know, it really sparked my imagination. And I remember starting to kind of connect with them and engage with them. And at the time, a lot of my, you know, my peers were like, hey, you should be hanging out with Vogue. What are you doing, you know, speaking to these girls? And I was like, listen, there's something going on here, especially in the creative community. And that's really how I kind of fell into, um, I guess, working with people who maybe weren't influencers, but were influential in their space. And so when I got approached by L'Oreal to um, basically set up a whole new division called digital communications uh, because there was no na- no name for it it was a really exciting brief because it hadn't been done before there was no kind of blueprint to follow and basically it was working with you know five of the biggest beauty brands in the world and and shaping what that looks like for those for those brands in terms of content and making it relevant and making sure that those brands could still speak directly to their consumer mm-hmm. um, so that's kind of how I sort of fell into it and it was through that role and through launching NIX into the UK and Ireland that really is when my career I guess sort of shifted and I started getting asked by brands to you know come in and strategize and do talks and that's when I knew okay this is the time to 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 go off and do something for myself you know okay Um, so that's kind of how I how I got into this space okay great that's awesome great story and thank you for um, sharing that with us today you know I want to kind of really start uh, you know kind of 
at the beginning, I mean, a lot of people um, know about influencer marketing or hear, heard about it, know it's something that they should try. It's really kind of the, the buzzword of the day. Mm. Um, but why don't you break it down for us? Really, what what is it? Why is it? And why specifically is it so important right now for e-commerce brands and why are they so successful with it? Yes, absolutely. Well, Interestingly, we call it community. You know, we really call our influencers our community. They are part of the community when we're building them around brands. But for anyone who's new to this, really it's looking at people who are almost little mini experts in their space, very credible in their space. And they don't necessarily have to have millions and millions of followers. They can actually have you know, very small followings, very tight followings, and we find those to be the most effective. Um, but they are influential because they're credible. And looking at ways that brands can connect with them and deliver content in a way that helps storytell around their brand, but also educates and informs and sometimes just outright entertains their community. And right. it's powerful because there's such a powerful trust with someone who looks, sounds, um, behaves like you, someone who maybe understands and can share the same concerns and desires. Um, and we're see, we've seen such a huge shift. You know, when I first started in, in this space, especially in the beauty and luxury space, right? Everything was about celebrities right. and being super aspirational. Mm -hmm. And I just think that actually with the last couple of years that we've had and for longer than that, people really are growing tired of that super glossy over over ill-filtered lifestyle and right. and people want to see more raw real conversations happening online and that's what influencers can bring to your brand gotcha gotcha thanks a lot for for breaking that down and that makes a lot of sense I, and i hadn't really heard anyone kind of describe it like that where traditionally these influencers these celebrities you know there, there's always been celebrities pitching brands um you know as long as kind of advertising has been around and that that's kind of always been out there i guess you could say they were kind of influencers but mm -hmm. we historically like you said you've always seen this kind of glossy filtered life of these you know celebrities and they're aspirational we aspire to be like them but i think we're at the day and the age now that yeah you know all right it's nice to to be like that or to aspire to be like that but you know really what's the real deal what are what are these people yes. doing day in day out because you know we're all people we're all human we all um you know put on one pants leg at a time yeah. <laughs> and so there's no, nothing changes about that as far as the human yeah. race is concerned so um it makes a lot of sense how we just really want to see the real deal right now mm. um and really what i want to go now is because Things have definitely changed within, you know, the, this past, you know, uh, past year, 2020, of course, everybody's been under this uh, whole COVID-19, the lockdowns worldwide. Our world has really shifted totally. And so yes. with this whole shift with regards to e-commerce and with regards to brands, what, what trends are you seeing in the whole world mm. of uh, influencer marketing? Yes, yes. I love this question because um, I want to try and cherry pick. There's a few that I'm quite a handful that I'm loving. I'm going to try and cherry pick the ones that I feel that no matter what stage you're at in your business, you don't have to be a huge brand that you can sort of really um, become present to. Um, the first and foremost is the fact that because there are so many more people online and so many more brands, you know, investing in um, either influencer marketing or, or creating content online, there is definitely a desire to stand out, right? So, you know, this isn't necessarily a trend, but something to really start thinking about is, you know, how are you going to create content that really stands out? You know, how can you inject things like humor? How can you inject more play, playfulness or interaction in that content? I'm seeing a lot more of that. And actually, this is where I see the brand new baby brands really mm. stepping up in this space because they know they don't have the huge budgets. Right. You know, so they have to get super creative. And it could be something as simple as just telling some home truths you know, and really cutting through the noise in that way. So that's something that I'm loving seeing more and more. But I think, you know, specifically when it comes to e-com and influencers, um, you know, I, I love it when I say that my word for the year, because we've had such a crazy year, is surrender. Mm -hmm. Right? right. <laughs> and, and I'm inviting brands to, to do the same. And the reason why I say this is because if you want your content to connect with the communities that you are sometimes paying hundreds if not thousands of pounds to these influencers to connect with, you need to be open to them 
leading the charge when it comes to the creative. Right. Right. So really, you know, when we're looking at these new formats, the TikToks, the reels, this is content that we're seeing for the first time. And and it doesn't how to doesn't really operate in the same way on there. And so mm. being really open to letting them be a, more of a collaboration rather than it. This is the brief. This is when it's launching. This is what we want, you know, and trying to create almost a mini ad on an influencer's platform that just doesn't right. work anymore. You know, right. so surrendering that creative control or at least being a bit more collaborative is something that I really feel a lot of brands need to be present to right mm. now because they are on it. You know, yeah. they know exactly how to maximize these platforms. Yeah. And so definitely something I, I, I definitely love to see. Um, it goes without saying being more expansive in your, in your approach to diversity and not in a tick box way, mm -hmm. you know, but really looking at your community, you know, one thing that I, I know for sure is that, especially for e-commerce, you know, people are looking at your social media, you know, they're scrolling back. They want to see what your stance was, you know, when conversations were happening last year. You know, people are doing that subconsciously. And so really be, having an expansive worldview where you're not completely abandoning your niche, but almost looking at other people who are credible, looking through your feed and saying, actually, have I proactively been as inclusive as I could? Does this feed just look like everyone that does everyone just look and sound exactly like me, right. even in terms of people you're collaborating with? Mm -hmm. Right. So really starting to think about that in a very, very structured way, because believe you or me, your community will call you out on it if they're not seeing that right now. So mm -hmm. it's such an important it's this is more than just ticking a box. This is really yeah. about you surviving the next 10 years in your brand yeah. um, and making sure that people really feel like they are represented in your yeah. business. Yeah, so true. And I, I think what you said is right as far as, you know, traditionally, a lot of brands are a lot of times when they're dealing with outside people, advertising on their behalf, marketing on their behalf, they use like a heavy handed approach where they give a, a strict um you know, media guide as to how you're supposed to market, how you're supposed yeah. to present our brand. And, you know, to an extent, you know, you, you do want these people to represent your brand correctly. Mm -hmm. So I, I understand that you want people to abide by your, you know, the criteria that you have and mm -hmm. how people should present your brand. That's fine. But, you know, these days it's a little different because of the social platforms. Like you said, we have yes. the TikTok, the Instagram, where there's a lot more creativity mm -hmm. involved in, in whatever you put out there. And so I mm -hmm. think what you said is spot on because... If you put it in the hands of these people, these influencers, they actually, it really kind of opens up, um, you know, a whole world that you may not have thought about as yes. your brand. And they, you know, because uh, they, they obviously know how to connect with people because many of them have tens and thousands and hundreds yeah. of thousands of followers. And then some of the bigger ones, of course, millions of followers. And, you know, people aren't just following them just, you know, for their health. They're, you know, mm -hmm. they're attracting an audience by what they do. And so, yeah, you, you do have to, I think, to a certain extent as a brand, take the back seat to how they are putting things out there and just, you know, yeah. kind of follow their lead. So um, great, sure. great point there. For sure. um, now, what I want to do is, because um, I'm really all about really what, what's our, what are some practical things that brands mm -hmm. can do to really achieve, you know, their goals, so specifically with, you know, influencer marketing. So yeah. what are some practical, actionable strategies that a brand can use to actually connect with the right influencer? Because I think that's really one of the yes. first steps in the process. Yes, yes. And actually a very important first step. Um, I think when you are approaching influencers as a brand, um, move away from this let's just get as many as possible and do one piece of activity right. because in all honesty that is not going to allow you to build a deep enough connection with their community you know so you know what used to happen was that okay we just want to have a squad of like 12 influencers and and you know and and go out for a campaign everyone talks about it mm -hmm. and then it walks away but actually what that does is like it's like taking out one ad in vogue Mm -hmm. right it, it's not going to have the impact that right. you want it to have and so what i would like to see is brands really taking a long-term view you know if you're going to work with someone you know do the deep dive look at the quality of their content have they spoken about brands like yours before have they actually spoken about your brand before and what kind of reception did it get on their on their feed um look mm -hmm. at their engagement 
you know and again moving away from not just we've all heard the term you know micro influences and I think we all know what that means but actually looking at specifically like almost like genre influences as well expanding when I say being expansive yes diversity is up there but also looking at different areas that are still talking to your audience you know one of the mm. things that we're doing with our brands is looking at you know the gaming community those gaming influencers who have massively engaged audiences who are used to buying they're there yeah. to buy from them right mm -hmm. and so looking you know we're talking to sports um people we're talking to different kinds of you know influencers that still attract the kind of community that we want to the brand um so doing that sort of legwork, I think, is still really important. I think it's easier to kind of just sort of put it out there and see what happens. But I think mm -hmm. doing that legwork to see who really resonates with your brand. And then once you've done that, looking at a more long-term collaboration so you can build a deeper connection with their community, you know, so they're seeing you regularly over a longer period of time. And I think that's something really practical that people can start doing today. And um, another thing, another practical tip that I would share is, you know, we're all here to sell, right? You know, my, I, we're here to make my clients more money, ultimately. And so that's, that's a given. But also remembering that they, when your customers online, they are seeing so many other brands that can give them what you give them, mm -hmm. right? So you're looking for other ways to retain their attention. And so creating regular appointments with your community, whether that is a weekly live with your expert, whether that's, you know, a conversation with an influencer and someone from your team, whether it's taking them behind the scenes in that regular way where they're like, you know, it's a bit like I used to run home and, and watch Oprah, right? <laughs> so it's a bit it's a bit like having that regular community where they're like, oh, every right. Wednesday or every end of the month, there's something going on with this brand. It keeps you front of mind and builds a deeper connection. And influencers are wonderful for helping you do that if you don't have the team or the experts in-house to yeah. be able to do that, right? So thinking mm -hmm. outside of just selling product and actually mm -hmm. how can you work with an influencer to build a deeper connection and have broader conversations that your community is interested in. Right, right. That's so true. It, it really is community building um, mm -hmm. when you're getting these influencers to work on, you know, on your behalf or promote on, on your behalf. So, you know, it's more than just like a, uh, a contractual relationship that you have mm. with them. Of course, you're, you're, you're paying them, they're getting, you know, percentage of order totals, or they're getting some type of cash incentive for what they're doing or a fixed amount that you agree on. Yeah, that that's the truth. But, you know, it's the way the world is now, the way these social networks are and the way things are changing so much, mm. that community is very important that you have, you stay engaged with them because, you know, as a brand, of course, you're going to have a lot of things going on on your end that you want to make sure that they're up to speed with. And as, as well as you want to get feedback from them, especially because the, things are changing so quick with all of these social networks that are just exploding. You know, you know, the TikTok, as you mentioned, is huge now. Now we have this huge um, social network called Clubhouse. Um, yes. I don't know if you're familiar with that, but it's, you know, mm -hmm. the audio only social network mm. go in to listen to different aud live audio fees. And so, mm -hmm. yeah, if you're not communicating, you may be, um, you know, missing out on some opportunities. And so, yeah, creating the community is, is essential. 100%. And to build on what you were saying about looking at where these trends and these shifts are happening, because, mm -hmm. you know, social media is always telling us what people want. These people that create Clubhouse, that create Instagram, that create Facebook, they know intrinsically what people want. And so when you see people moving more towards audio, when you see all of that, pay attention right there's a desire there and this is why I say about being expansive with who you work with as an influencer there's many people that are not influencers or content creators but have great influence right. you know I would say you know Arlen you know this show you have influence right and so mm -hmm. it's looking at who you actually want to collaborate with because they have very powerful connections podcasters with their audience because they're listening to you every single week right mm -hmm. and so when we start to see those shifts I think it's important that brands pay attention to that um, and you know one of the reasons why we actually hire influencers in our agency to, to develop strategy alongside us with our clients is for that very reason because they are so attuned to what's coming next mm -hmm. you know yeah. and it really helps the brands understand it from the influencer and the community's point of view yeah yeah definitely so true 
Um, and that kind of brings me to my my next question. I'm going to kind of pivot a little bit and, and, and really kind of play mm -hmm. devil's advocate on this one, because I know it's a question that a lot of people wonder. Um, mm -hmm. Hit because, me. Yeah, <laughs> you know, there, there is a, a million and one marketing strategies, as people know. Mm -hmm. You know, you can go on YouTube, Google and, and, and type in e-commerce marketing strategies and you get a million results. There's a lot of different yeah. things you can do, as you as you all are, are aware of. Mm -hmm. But so one of the big questions playing devil's advocate is, you know, with influencer marketing and where it is right now, is it really a sustainable strategy for years to come? And is mm. it, you know, is it worth the while or, you know, is it something that's going to be kind of a fly by night strategy or the influencers of today going to just disappear? Is everything going to mm. switch? Um, what do you, what do you think? It's such a good question. And yeah, I re I was in a talk actually just before we went into lockdown for Soho House. We had a bit of a challenge about this question, this exact question. Um, mm. And here's my thoughts on it. I think that influencer marketing is definitely a sustainable strategy, but it's going to be a shifting strategy, mm. right? It's not going to be just like when it first exploded all some of the influencers that we worked with had to do was hold something up and say it was available now and it would sell out. That right. doesn't work anymore in the right, same right. way that, you know, Jennifer Aniston or JLo swooshing her hair used to sell out products that doesn't work anymore. And so it's thinking about, it's always going to be shifting. And this is why, I, you know, invite brands to think about who is the person of influence and not necessarily the influencer. Who is right. this person listening to day in, day out? And how can you integrate them into your content? Because I do think it's shifting. And actually, one of the lovely things about it shifting is that, you know, we're seeing so many people who are influenced by, you know, their best friend's big sister. Mm -hmm. You know, so, you know, the work that you do, Alan, and, you know, with the affiliate work is is so smart because this is, you know, you called it basically, you know, this is how it's shifting. It's going to be an integration of people that you know, love and trust, as yeah. well as the people that you are inspired by and follow on social media. It's going to be mm -hmm. a combination. And that's why we always talk about building communities and not just influencer marketing. Yeah, very, very true. And yeah, it, it, it's interesting that you mentioned um, J-Lo and Jennifer Aniston, maybe at the beginning of this whole influencer marketing celebrity uh, culture. How before, you know, they could just switch their hair and they could command, yeah. you know, millions of dollars to promote a brand where it's different now. And the reason I say it's interesting now is because you can see it by just what these influencers are doing. And I'll give an example. Um, J-Lo, for instance, um, and this is, wasn't even that long ago, maybe a year or two ago, has focused a lot on her YouTube channel. She has a yeah. YouTube channel with a, a, a lot of followers and so does her um I guess, I don't know if they're married now yet, um, mm -hmm. A-Rod, um, he has a, a pretty popular YouTube channel as well. And what mm -hmm. they've done, both of them, is they have really kind of invited the world into their kind of personal lives. And so yes. they've done a ton of back um, scenes, videos of them at home, them with mm -hmm. their the kids that they both have uh, when she was on her tour, all of that, just kind of inviting you into their world. And as we were mentioning earlier, that's really what people want to see. They want to see, you know, what are these celebrities really doing? Yeah, it's fine that they, you know, they're rich, they're wealthy, and, you know, mm -hmm. there's that filter of this glamorous lifestyle. But at the end of the day, you know, they're people, so people want to see what it is yes. they do day in and day out. They want to see those conversations. And, you know, yes. for, you know, you do that to take it what it's for what it's worth for the most part. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of it is can be, you know, maybe a little, a little bit staged, of course, because there's a camera there. They're not going to tell you the real deal, but you do get a mm -hmm. glimpse of, um, you know, kind of behind the scenes to what's going on. And I think seeing things like that, and there's a lot of celebrities that are doing this now that are, um, bigger celebrities not just you know the average kind of youtube influencers i mean you, we've got the will smiths of course that has yes done, he, he's followed that same playbook where he has opened it his kind of world up mm. to you know to the to the world so yeah um, yeah and it says a lot right because they know that that direct to consumer conversation mm -hmm. is so powerful they don't have to wait for a media outlet to give them an exactly. exclusive anymore you know it's really exactly. important yeah, exactly. And they know they can use that platform not only to um, to um, promote the brands that they represent, but to promote themselves. So, you know, so yes. like J-Lo, when she, she can do that, use that YouTube channel to promote 
anything she does from her, you know, music she puts out to movies to whatever it is. And Will mm-hmm. Smith is the same way. I, I, I follow his YouTube channel and whenever he has a, a movie coming out, he'll put out an early trailer on his YouTube because, you know, he yes. knows he has that audience there. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, definitely, um, you know, changing times. And I think you're, you're, you're totally right. It's not going to really go anywhere. It's just going to be shifting and it's going to be mm-hmm. evolving o- over the years for sure. Yeah. Um, and, you know, what I want to do now, just to, as we prepare to wrap things up, um, I'm always a huge advocate of looking at what some of the larger brands are doing and how mm-hmm. some of the successful ones have, have, have really grasped certain strategies. So what are some, you know, well-known brands that you've seen or brands that you think we may have known um, that have been successful with, you know, influencer marketing? What specific tactics did they utilize? Yes, yes. I love this question. Um, I'm going to be a little bit biased. So I'm going to talk about brands that we work with <laughs> um, yeah. just because, you know, I think it's important to show um, how much they've had to evolve. That's, it's a steep learning curve for brands, mm-hmm. right, to, to move in this direction. But, you know, if we look at um, NYX, for example, NYX, which is a L'Oreal owned brand, um, mm-hmm. they were really one of the first brands to sort of pioneer this space because um, when we launched it into the UK and Ireland, um, we actually didn't create any original content whatsoever. Mm-hmm. You know, and we managed to grow that social following from literally, you know, 3,000 to 100,000 in under a year. Okay. Right. And that was just purely through getting the product out to the community yes influencers but mainly out to community and and girls that just love makeup and then celebrating the looks they were creating online you know so then you had this real hive of people who were like tagging us every single day but for that chance to be featured and like you see it's very common on um channels now but that was a brand that really pioneered that that kind of behavior Okay. And also what I, um, I love about that brand as well is that they we really got behind what the influencers wanted to create for themselves. So, you know, they wanted to do makeup masterclasses. The brand could sponsor it, mm-hmm. get behind it, help them actually realize their dreams. Right. You know, and I think that's what we talk about when we say building more of a community and connection, because when they are now launching something, you don't even nine times out of 10, they just want to promote it because they feel like they are behind the scenes with you. They're part of your brand. You're part of the mm. family. Right. Yeah, so exactly. I think that's a really, really great example. Um, another example of a big brand, which I know is big in the States as well, is um, one of our clients, Cantu Beauty, which is a, mm. a brand that's specifically t- tailored to textured hair, Afro hair. And, you know, we have a uh, launched initiative here in the UK called the Curl Awards. Mm. And it's a little bit like, um, you know, the voice, but for, for textured hairstylists where okay. you know, we set them lots of challenges. We invite influencers to get involved. And again, it's a great opportunity to just celebrate their creativity, but also use a platform of a big brand to promote them and to highlight them as the top stylists and give them challenges and the community vote on them. So it's a really well-rounded way to bring both influencers and your community together, but with the brand at the heart. Right. Or, or, you know, being the glue of that. And so I think looking to brands that are having, uh, as I said, creating experiences and creating opportunities to connect with their communities on a deeper level, those Mm -hmm. are the brands that are winning because every time you launch a product, the excitement around that and the shareability always increases because they are there to be entertained and they know it's a trade-off, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Those would be two I would recommend. Okay, great. I appreciate you sharing that. And you're right. It is definitely a a kind of a two way street where it's it's, it's not just, you know, um, the brands kind of pushing things out to these influencers. Mm. It's almost like like we said before, it's just a community and they feel like they're part of your brand. So they're going to do what they can to, you know, include your brand into their whole world. Mm. That's really the ideal scenario. Exactly. um, What it is you're doing part of their day to day activities. Mm-hmm. Well, um, you know, I could go on and talk about influencer marketing <laughs> all day because as you so know, our audience knows it's really, you know, my uh, bread and butter here, what we do all mm-hmm. day. And we advise people on how to get affiliates and influencers. So it's a, it's, it's a tough topic that's near and dear to my heart. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I really appreciate you coming on, um, Irene, because I've learned a lot and I know our listeners have as well. Um, and so definitely a lot of great awesome. takeaways. Uh, but before we let you go, I always like to switch gears on my last question and <laughs> pick your brain on uh, one closing fun fact that you think our audience would be interested to know about yourself. I love this question. 
<laughs> um, I don't know if it's a fun fact, um, but it's definitely something people don't necessarily know. But I have a, a strange, I wouldn't say a strange hobby, but an unusual hobby. Um, and I love writing horror fiction. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> so awesome. this is, this is, I wouldn't say, yeah, I guess it's a fun fact, but I find it really, really relaxing. <laughs> Okay. This is, now it just makes it sound weird, but mm -hmm. you know, I find it really relaxing to be able to step into a completely fictional world, mm -hmm. um, and you know, I don't know, horror just always seems to be the thing that comes that that comes through. Um, okay. So that's my kind of fun fact. Maybe I'll I'll put out a series one day. Who knows? Okay. Well, that's that's awesome. Yeah, I wouldn't. I probably wouldn't have guessed that you like writing horror fiction. Well, I, I wonder if are you a fan of that a HBO series uh, Lovecraft? Uh, county, have you, uh, are you familiar with that? I've seen a couple of episodes. I think okay. I need to let it. I need to let it. Um, you know, it's a grower. I think for me. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. <laughs> gotcha. The reason I mentioned that is because I know the the uh, creator and the writer is uh, mm. an African American um, young lady, and um, yeah, she's done big things with that. That's definitely. I love uh, it. A horror genre and um yeah really interesting yes. show and it, I, i've seen some things in that show i think i've seen anywhere else <laughs> so just prepare yourself if you hang in there with it and, um, okay i will it's good to know i'm <laughs> gonna give it another try <laughs> yeah yeah definitely definitely stick through it yeah very very interesting show well thank you thank for you. sharing that irene i appreciate that um fun fact and lastly of course before we let you go um if any of our listeners want to reach out to you and and pick your brain any more about influencer marketing or really any digital marketing tactics at all or what is the best way for them to get in contact with you so the best place to go is to um, head over to our website which is just digital hyphen marketing dot london and when you head over there you'll see a tab called invitation and that's where you can uh, essentially book some time for to speak with myself or my team and if you're a smaller brand who's just getting started or emerging feel free to head over to my website irenemore.com um, where you can find out about my coaching and mentoring packages too okay great well thank you for sharing that irene I, I definitely encourage all of our listeners to take you up on that and reach out to you and set up a time to meet with yourself or your team so that they can explore you know, digital marketing, influencer marketing, or really anything to help their brand. Thank you so much for having me, Alan. I've loved it. No problem. And thank you uh, for joining us today on the e-commerce marketing podcast. Thank you for listening to the e-commerce marketing podcast. If you've enjoyed this episode of the e-commerce marketing podcast, be sure to rate, review, subscribe, and share it with everyone you know. 